In this video, I'm going to show you how to use one of the most advanced features or tools within the ArtCam education version, which is the two rail sweep. But I'm also going to show you how you can create a texture from a photograph or an image. And I'm going to do this by just using a straightforward JPEG image just to show you how you can create a relief from this. Now, I don't want this to be over the whole of the relief. I want it to create a, basically a, a border. So I'm going to do a rectangle, which is 340 in width, 240 in height, and I want to invert the corners. And I'm going to give this a corner radius of, let's say, 35, just to create the border. And I'm going to center this in the model. Now I'm not going to worry about this vector for a moment. I'm going to create a texture over the whole of the relief. And I'm going to do this by using a tool called the Texture Relief Tool. Now, if you saw the previous video, you would have seen that this was done using the generic tools within here. What I'm going to do now is use from file. So make sure that it's set to whole relief and select file. And this allows you to select an image. Here you can see, I've got this folder full of JPEGs. And I'm going to use this English free um, image that I have here. And this gives me a blue preview of this. Now you can see that this is quite large. So what I'm going to do is to bring this down to about 50 millimeters. And this is going to be copied and tiled along the hold of the relief. So to paste this down, if I select add, it will do this over all of the relief, as you can see here. So I can now close the texture relief tool. And let's just zoom in, and take a look at this texture. Now you can see that it's quite rough. So if I wanted to, I could smooth this by using the smooth relief tool, which is here. And I can do this over the whole relief, do it one pass, select apply. There you can see what it's like over one pass. Do it again, another pass. pass. And there you can see that's done two passes. So I can then cancel that, take a plan view, and you can see that that's made that a lot smoother. And now what I need to do is to just trim out the inside of the of the piece so if i double click on the vector it will open up the shape editor and i'm going to just click zero and this will trim out or delete any of the inside of that vector so it leaves me with this nice border so i've got this brickwork border effect now what I'm going to do is create some text. So I'm going to switch back to the 2D view to do this. And I'm going to toggle the relief preview on. And this shows me what's in the 3D view on the 2D view, basically. So let's create some text. I'm going to use the same engraver font that I used for a previous video. And I'm going to type in bloodhound now you can see that this is quite large so I'm going to make this a little bit smaller like so and then select create when I'm happy with that and I'm just going to center that in the, the model switch back to the 3d view and I'm going to use the shape editor on this just to create a relief or a 3d piece from this. So if I select shape editor and I'm going to create a beveled edge and what I want to do with this is to basically have a chamfer running around the edge of this. So if I zoom in the way that I can do this is to use the limit to height option within the shape editor and what I want to do is to add a start height to this and this is going to create a flat 
of 0.5 and then limit to height and I'm going to limit this to a height of 0.2 and this is going to basically give me a 0.2 millimeter chamfer around the edge so there you can see the chamfer if I undo that let's make it a bit larger so let's try 1 as the start height and 0.5 as the limit height so that's created a 0.5 millimeter chamfer around the edge of the text so if I zoom out now and take a plan view what I'm going to do now is to use the two rail sweep tool and what I want to do is create a relief that sweeps through the blood head so I'm going to do that by creating two polylines which run through the bloodhound text so let's create a polyline and I'm going to do this from towards the bottom down here so let's click on there left click and select up there now you can see that this is doing straight polylines so let's turn on smooth polylines and let's create this swoosh sort of curvy vector here and let's create another one below that like so now these are the two curves that the cross section is going to be swept along so let's create some cross sections now I'm going to do this by creating an ellipse so let's create an ellipse here just move that and I'm going to node edit this so press N on the keyboard for node edit and I'm going to hover over one of the nodes right click on it and you can see that I've got these options so I'm going to cut the vector do the same for the one on the right and you can see that I've got two vectors now so I'm going to delete the bottom vector and this is our cross section so I'm going to create a copy of that and I'm going to create two unique cross sections so node edit this, if I press I on the keyboard it will insert a node so here you can see just inserting lots of nodes and then I'm just going to left click on the blue ones and just drag them down you can see it creates this unique shape do the same on the top one, insert a node like so and then just drag them down so you can see I've got these two shapes and these are going to sweep along the two polylines going through the bloodhound and it's going to go from the top one to the bottom one so if we select the two rail sweep tool which is here it will open up the dialog box now this dialog box looks quite complicated it's not so don't be scared about using this tool all that you need to do is select the top drive rail which is going to be this curve S click select select the bottom which is this one click select you'll notice that they're both turning A to B and you'll notice that it gives me these arrows on there now make sure that you have the arrows going in the same direction otherwise if you had one going the opposite direction it would create a twisted relief so if you did have one all that you need to select is either the first or the second and it will reverse the direction that it's flowing in so just make sure that you've got them the same then we need to add the cross section so let's add the top cross section click add cross section and then the bottom one and what this is going to do it's going to go from the top one at one there going all the way along to the bottom one at two and it's going to blend in between I'm going to scale the final height so let's do this one millimeter uh, we know that that will s just fit perfectly underneath the bloodhound text very importantly make sure that you select highest and then click click calculate and then this will blend nicely together so here you can see the two rail sweep what I'm going to do now is just close the tool and just turn off the vectors so you can see it 
So here you can see it's created this quite nice shape. But the ends are not exactly what I want. So I want the ends to fade into the bottom of the plane. So what I'm going to do with this is to use the sculpting tools to erase this. So if I use the erase sculpting tool, I'm just going to adjust the radius and the strength of this and they start erasing. Now it's not doing anything at the moment, that's because I need to change it to erase to base plane and then it will start erasing to the base plane. Let's just make the radius a bit larger. You can see it's slowly erasing parts of the relief here. Just zoom in so you can see this. And let's just make the radius quite large so it gives me a nice blend into the zero plane. Do the same on the other end. Now I'm just left clicking, holding the maze button down and just dragging over the areas that I want to erase here. And there you can see it's blended both of the ends in quite nicely to the zero plane. Now if I select snapshot and accidentally erase something that I want to keep, I can select revert and it will go back to that snapshot and all of this is controlled by the undo button so if I did erase something that was not in the snapshot I could just undo this so here you can see my final piece using the two rail sweep 